Our today's topic of discussion is corneal anatomy and contact lenses. The cornea is comprised of the following layers, epithelium, Bowman's layer, stroma, decimase membrane, and endothelium. The cornea is the most powerful refracting surface of the eye, with an average diopteric power of 48.8. The epithelium is 5 to 6 cell layers thick. The epithelium is the anterior continuation of the conjunctival epithelium, which is actually a continuation of the epidermis of the skin. The epithelium is anchored to the second layer of the corneal, the stroma, by a basement membrane called Bowman's membrane or layer. The epithelium has an average thickness of 50 to 60 microns. The optical quality of the cornea depends on the integrity of the epithelium. The optical properties can easily be disturbed due to fluid changes or trauma induced by contact lenses. The tear film and epithelium act as a barrier to foreign bodies and friction from blinking. With contact lens use, the corneal epithelium may have a loss of structural integrity leading to a greater sensitivity of the underlying nerve endings. Disturbance to epithelial function can be directly linked to a contact lens that reduces the available oxygen to the cornea. This situation is referred to as induced corneal hypoxia see chapter 10. Associated with this is an increase in carbon dioxide hypercapnia. The stromal layer is immediately posterior to Bowman's layer. The final, inner layer is the corneal endothelium, which is a single-celled layer 5 microns thick. The endothelial cells, which cannot regenerate, average 18 micrometers wide and are tightly joined. The endothelium keeps the corneal layers dehydrated. The corneal epithelial surface needs to be hydrated by the tears, but the interior must be dehydrated in order to remain clear. A hydrated cornea becomes opaque. When the cornea is stressed, as during contact lens wear, the fluid balance shifts and the endothelial pump mechanism is unable to maintain the proper hydration of the cornea. This imbalance will lead to stromal edema. Edema is evidenced as either striae, moderate edema, or folds, severe edema. Corneal hypoxia is the outcome of oxygen deprivation or depletion to the cornea associated with contact lenses. When the eye is open, the cornea acquires its oxygen supply from the atmosphere, aqueous, and limbal blood vessels. With the introduction of the contact lens to the eye, the oxygen supply is shifted to depend more on the oxygen supply from the aqueous humor. The shift is further extenuated when the eye is closed, eliminating atmospheric oxygen, and additional oxygen must be supplied by blood vessels. This creates a lower oxygen tension, leading to a shift in the fluid influx into the corneal stroma. Hypoxia is directly proportional to the wear time. Long-term contact lens use, extended greater than flexible greater than daily, and soft greater than rigid, will have various hypoxic effects on the cornea. The amount of hypoxia and subsequent edema will be directly proportional to the length of lens wear. The limbus, which forms the juncture between the cornea and the sclera, can also suffer from hypoxia. It may demonstrate new blood vessel growth called neovascularization. Normal limbal vascularization is differentiated from neovascularization by the physical characteristics of the vessels. Normal limbal vessels exhibit a looping with a lack of congestion redness due to being engorged with an extra amount of blood. Limbal congestion is exhibited as vessel dilatation without vessel looping. Early neovascularization demonstrates limbal congestion with new vessel growth of less than 1 mm into the cornea, while neovascularization extends more than 1 mm into the cornea see Chapter 10. In order to maintain the proper relationship between the contact lens and the cornea, oxygen must be able to flow through the lens. Oxygen permeability DK, describes the permeability of a material to various gases such as oxygen. Oxygen transmissibility DK, L, relates the DK value to the material based on the thickness L, of the contact lens, thus describing the oxygen permeability at the contact's geometric center point 3, 4 to prevent corneal edema, certain levels of oxygen transmissibility through the contact lens must be achieved. The epithelium requires a DK, L of 64. The ability of a contact lens to allow oxygen transmission across the lens surface and deliver it to the cornea in a similar level to that of an eye without a contact lens is called the equivalent oxygen percent EOP. In other words, EOP is the percentage of oxygen delivered to the cornea without a lens atmospheric versus the amount of oxygen delivered to the cornea with a contact lens acting as a barrier. Normal atmospheric air has an oxygen level of 21%. 
The oxygen requirements of the cornea, in order to avoid hypoxia, will vary between 5% and 10%. At 5% oxygen, the normal cornea will swell about 2%. At 8% oxygen, the cornea will swell about 1%. The normal cornea will tend to swell approximately 4% when the eye is closed, as during sleep, however, this can be substantially higher if extended or flexible wear contact lenses are worn during sleep.